So we're gonna do another phone video today, uh, like I did last time. Um, it's just easier to use my phone, but I'm gonna show you guys how I make drop spindles and why you need them, why you don't need them, if you do need them, if you don't need them, I'm gonna go over all of that in this video right now. Drop spindles get you away from doing this. So whenever you lower your car enough, the uh, spindles are too long and the upper control arms are going to bind up and stick through the uh, stick up. They're gonna be like hitting your strut tower. Basically. So when they hit your strut tower, you can't go any lower. You can't, there's like not really a way to go any lower because your spindle is the height that you, that you can go. It's like your minimum, your minimum height that you can be at or your minimum lowness you can be at, I guess. So the only way to drop that is to cut the spindle. So some people cut one inches. I think mine are cut one inch. I should have done like three or four. Um, but two inches is pretty good. Uh, most people, if they're not gonna go like stupid low, I tell them, you know, just cut an inch out, inch and a half, something like that. Uh, the ones we're doing today are two inches. Um, and every chassis is a little bit different. Some chassis prefer one inch, some chassis prefer two. Uh, it all varies, but like if you're going like stupid low and you don't want to cut your towers You don't even want to touch them cut three or four out. That's a lot uh, There's other issues that comes with that. We're not gonna go over that right now I'm just gonna show you guys how I make my spindles and there's people that make them other ways uh, There's people that make them better ways than I make them. I think um, I'm one of the only ones that I know of that actually TIG welds them a lot of people MIG weld them But if, if it works it works, you know what I mean? Uh, stance car stuff as much as people hate it, want to say it, it's the modern day hot rodding. That's what it is. Uh, we take stuff that we can't buy or people don't make. Um, big companies don't want to do anything because there's not a market in it. Um, they just think that everybody just, you know, everybody with a stance car just has coilovers and wheels and that's your build, which a lot of them are, unfortunately. But a lot of us are actually raising our motors, uh, having to get custom axles built. Uh, extending um, tie rod ends, uh, drop spindles, drop forks. You know, there's a lot of stuff that goes into this. My wagon is actually tubed, or not tubed, it's actually tubbed in the rear. Um, it actually got to the point where it was so low that the tire was just resting on the inner wheel well. So cut the wheel well out, build a new one. Um, there's a lot of stuff that goes into this. I'm just gonna try to keep this video kind of short, but I'm gonna let you guys in on how I do it. I will show you the steps. Um, and then at the end, I'll do like a little time lapse. I just already did one. Um, so I'll just throw that in there and we'll just work it like so that. These are the spindles I got. He's going to rebuild them. He's going to do new wheel bearings, all that stuff. These are just the donors right now. Um, this is your stock spindle right here, right? And what we're doing is we're chopping this out of it. So this is a two inch piece I cut out. So that's the difference in them. And like I said, this will bring your your upper control arm down. So like this is my CRX, uh, it's a drag car. It doesn't have the strut tires cut because it's not low enough. The, the upper control arms don't hit it. Um, but when you lower it, you'll notice you'll start to see stuff like this, but worse. And maybe some cracking. You'll feel it in the car for sure. And that's how you'll know if you're, your upper control arm. First thing I do is you can see how this has like a cleaner finish. I grind all the rust off of the area I'm working on. Uh, you want to make sure that your rust is clean, it's dirty up there, but you want to make sure your rust is clean past where you're going to be welding at because you don't want it to suck in that the rust and um, contaminate the weld or anything like that. So I sand everything down and then I 45 everything, cut everything at 45s, um, and then basically when I weld it, I just fill everything. So if you were just to cut it and just weld one pass around it, it's, it's not going to hold. There's a 0% chance that it's going to hold. This These hold a lot of the pressure of the car. So you have to notch them and make sure you penetrate as far into the metal as you can and then work your way out. So I know from doing these in the past that I like to cut this bump out right here. Cause a lot of times when you're running a bunch of camber, um, this your, str your strut sits like right here. So the more camber you run, the closer those springs are gonna get. So I like to take everything out that, you know, like this, it gives you just a little bit more room, you know what I mean? So I know I'm gonna cut it in between here and here. It's gonna have a cut in there. I normally try to hug this a little bit tighter and then I'll measure two inches down and then clean all of that, all this rust down. off. I got all the rust out. This stuff's okay. You don't really got to worry about that because it's getting cut out. So what I do 
is like I said, I want to kind of hug over here more because when I you got to think when you when you notch this here, I'll draw it. When you notch this, you know, if I cut it back here and then I go to notch it, the notch is gonna be back here. Well, that's fine up here, but when I get down here, I'm gonna be notching into all this. We don't want to do that. So what I do is I kind of hug this side right here, like this, and then when I notch it, it'll be back here which is like clear of this. So you'll see it'll be like 45. It'll be cut like, it'll be cut like this. And this will be cut like this. And this side will be cut like this. So basically you make it to where it's just this thin spot that you have to weld that your welder can actually penetrate. So we're gonna cut it here. And then we're going to measure out two inches. It's hard to do with one hand, my bad guys. We're gonna measure out two inches, make another mark and then cut those. Have this chopped off, that chopped off, and our two inch block cut out of here. That's where it used to live. We're gonna get rid of that. We're gonna put this to here, like that. But like I said, if you, if you were to, oh well, like this really, but if you were to just weld this like this, it's never gonna penetrate enough. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna chamfer this all the way down so we can get down and penetrate in there real nice. So I'm gonna do it down. Now you can see what I'm talking about, about how we're just gonna fill all of that. And I know that where I have here and here is plenty small, that like square on the end and the rectangle in here, it's pretty, my welder can definitely penetrate that. I'm not worried about that. So we're just gonna do that like that and then fill that all the way around. That way, instead of just pulling metal from, let me grab a drill bit. So if we were, weren't to do that, you know, we'd only pull metal from like the top of the drill bit right here out. And then all of this under here, you know, that wouldn't be getting like penetrated. So what we do now is, you know, we're just gonna pull a little bit out of here and it's gonna pull a little bit out of here and it's gonna pull a little bit out of here. And then I go these, this way through them. And when I go that way, it pulls it out of here and out of here and out of here, you know what I mean? So that way we make sure that all of this is solid. Okay, now on to the welding side of things. The common misconception with these is that they are cast iron because they look like cast iron. Every old head that doesn't know about this stuff is gonna tell you they're cast iron. They're really cast steel. Uh, cast steel is significantly easier to weld than cast iron. I weld both frequently. Um, but so cast steel, so I used to use uh, nickel filler, and then um, that wasn't like right. It was uh, some of my drop spindles that cracked on my car personally. I haven't had anything break on anybody else's car. Uh, so then I switched to stainless steel filler, and then uh, one of my buddies told me that he just uses like mild steel, like chromoly filler. So I use that now, and everything seems to be stronger. So that's what we're gonna use to weld it. Um, Everybody says to preheat it. I don't do that. I What I'll do is I'll weld around the insides and fusion weld this together and it's gonna crack a couple times and then that'll heat the metal, the metal up hotter than your torch is gonna get it because it's melting it. So I'll weld around a couple times just fusion welding and then I'll start adding filler. Okay, now I have all this fusion welded together. So basically we're just filling this gap now is what we're doing. So what I'm gonna do is the first couple times I lay filler I'm gonna lay it straight in like this, boom, 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 and then work that up. And I'll do a pass out here, a pass out here, and a pass in the middle. Pass out here, pass out here, pass in the middle. And after I get it built up decently, is when I start going across. I snake it back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. But I'll show you guys that okay, as I do. So we got the root pass laid down in here, as you can see, it's built up. Now, every time I do passes now, I'm gonna lay a pass here. Lay a pass here, and then one in the middle. So here, here, middle. Here, here, middle. All the way on all four corners. One, two, one, two, three, and then the bottom is four. So each one's gonna get outside, outside, inside. All right, so what you got here is you have, this is one run, this is one run, and this is another. So now I'm gonna start feeling this way, like this. Okay, so what we did on that pass is what a lot of people call walk in the cup. We started here, 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 here. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run like stringer beads. So it's just gonna be dab, 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 turn, dab, 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 turn, dab, 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 turn, dab, dab. 
And I'll probably do two passes of that on each and that should fill the rest of this up like that. And that's that, it's still glowing red hot, but we ran beads like this. All the way around. Now, a lot of people go back and grind everything. It makes it look better. Um, you can do that. Uh, I typically don't do it. Um, it's just aesthetically pleasing, but I'd rather have more filler on there than it look clean. So, that's how I leave it. And there you have it. You drop spindles already. Go slap them on your car. Go do super low car things. Let me know what you guys think. Like, comment, subscribe. Let me know how terrible of a welder I am. What I truly mean? believe that our main purpose in this life is to make sure that when that time comes for you and you're sitting there with your life flashing before your eyes, that you are proud of what you see there. That you are proud of what you see flashing before your eyes. Because this life that we have here on earth is very, very short. So you better make the fucking most of it. You better live every single moment with love, compassion, with kindness, and you better give back as much as you possibly could, because that is what life is about. That is what being human is about, and nothing more. I don't give a fuck about your phone, about what car you drive. None of that matters. What matters is the person next to you. Knowing that that person feels pain.